Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take a look at validation, right? So we're going to be using Fluent Validation and Beautify's built-in validation for forms. And we're going to see how we're going to mix the two together. So before we start off, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stop the application that I have running. I'm going to go into Nugget Packages and I'm going to get the Fluent Validation.ASP.NET Core package. Go ahead and install that to your API. We're not going to do much with it just yet. Just get it installed and uh, start your server again. And uh, once that's going, uh, we're going to go first through the UI and then for the forms that we submit from the UI into the back end, we're then going to basically do the validation on the front end and then validation on the back end. We're going to see how that's going to work. All right. So there is the server. It started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to sign in. All right. Test password and the first form that we're going to start with is the create trick right so this form right here let's go ahead and open up the trick steps as they were and this div right here that is wrapping our form currently let's go ahead and change it to a v form uh, on here we want to put a ref of form so we can reference it later and uh, trigger validation and then we're going to have a v model of uh, something that we should bind to that, I mean, somewhere, basically put the validation somewhere. When I do my validation, you can uh, think about how you want to do this yourself, but I essentially create a property for validation. And here I'll just say validate name sort of thing and the rules go in there. Uh, I put a parent property of valid. We'll start with uh, false, right? And valid is what we put on the form itself. Right, so validation, valid, and this is the thing that sort of controls this. Is the form overall valid or not? Now, as it goes for the rules, it will be something like this. So uh, the, the rules themselves are like a collection of Lambda expressions, and uh, they will look a little bit weird to start with, and that's just because of how JavaScript works. Um, but fret not, just roll with it, and you will get used to it, right? So a value comes in. It's going to be a Lambda. We want to verify it. Um, if we just do like this, we're basically checking if it's a string. If we apply some Boolean logic to it, we're basically, uh, if it's going to be empty and false, that's gonna result to true. And otherwise it's gonna result to false. If it results to false, we wanna go ahead and display our, you know, our message. So name is required, okay? And we wanna do the same thing for others as well. So because this is a one-liner, again, I'm just gonna put it over here. And if you need have more validation rules, just apply them to the validation here. And I mean, go uh, do, do as many as you need to, right? So we're, I'm gonna do one for description, for difficulty and for categories. For categories, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expect a length more than zero, okay? And we can say description is required. Difficulty is required. And um, at least one category is required. Okay. Now that we got the rules, let's go ahead and put them on here. So vText field, uh, let's go ahead and spread this out a little bit. On here, uh, we will have rules, validation, name right let's go ahead and copy this we can make this self-closing again uh, let's actually put this on this line here uh, the other ones again spread it out a little bit let's put this one here closing tag kind of is this the, yeah this is the difficulty so just forgot to change the description on here let's get the description make the self-closing. Another thing that I wanted to do is I, uh, as um, we have this search field up here for the, um, what's it called, for the tricks and everything, uh, there's gonna be a lot of tricks in the end. So for prerequisites and progressions, I did, I don't, I wanna change this to an autofill or, or an autocomplete one as well, because there is gonna be a lot there. So let's go ahead and change it. So let's just go ahead to take the V select and change it to autocomplete for the prerequisites and autocomplete for the progressions as well, right? So you can select multiple ones. Uh, again, we can make these self-closing ones. Uh, I don't think there is any need to not have that. And for the categories, let's go ahead and put the rules of categories in here, okay? And again, we can make this self-closing. 
Uh, as it goes for the buttons over here, what we can do is in here we grab a ref essentially, so refs, and we can go to the form, right? So if you remember on here, we stuck the re uh, form reference, and on the form itself, we can grab the validate function that's going to return a boolean is the form valid or not so if the form is valid we want to do the steps otherwise let's just return zero and that's like a no op no operation right and otherwise in total also disable if validation valid is invalid right so that's uh, sort of the thing and what will happen now is the things that you don't select that are required are going to basically start displaying the thing and uh, you're going to have the next uh, blurred out. So let's go ahead and try this again. So you can see it's blurred out from the start and we can do something like test, test, difficulty, let's select something like easy, kick, and this one actually you will see that we can start typing in here and uh, we, but we can still select multiple ones, right? So that, that's the thing. So you can search through these a little bit more easily than just scrolling through them. So now on the review part, this is the part that I actually want to take care of as well. So let's go ahead and quickly step through of what do we actually want to display on here, right? So uh, the reason for change that, that can stay maybe at the bottom somewhere, but primarily uh, let's just display a couple of divs that will basically, you know, just say name and you know su summarize the the form that we have so for the name we can have a form a name put this on one line because it's not going to be too different description description difficulty remember that this is going to be an id so we will need to import a dictionary so we can grab stuff from there so let's go ahead in addition to our lists dictionary let's grab our dictionary there it is and now where we had this let's go into dictionary difficulties and we're gonna grab form the difficulty okay uh kind of the same thing will have to happen with prerequisites and uh, progressions let's actually not copy it from here so was it I uh, can't uh, remember for the life of me how to spell this thing so let's just put it here big p on difficulties this will have to go to tricks uh, but what will happen now is form prerequisites map these this is going to be a, again a bunch of ids so we will be mapping these to the dictionary tricks so let's just grab this thing here i know it's not it shouldn't be too far so we'll grab the specific trick and then we just want to this is going to be an array and uh, we will be grabbing just the names so we're going to end up with a bunch of names in the end and just concatenate them using a uh, what's called a comma and um, a space okay so uh, i guess uh, you know you can't have everything as always as you as always say uh, let's just do the same for progressions Regressions, same thing will happen with tricks. Uh, categories, uh, this will have to go into categories. Categories, okay. And but the the way that it displays is pretty much still the same. The same. Uh, another thing that I want on here is if we remove this thing, we add another button. I think we'll need some margin top on here, otherwise it will be too close. And let's put a V spacer on here and we're just gonna say let the user go back and edit right so step minus y minus edit and for this bit here what i actually wanted to do is because we can either update or edit because we have an editing clause here we can say update or create and let's just put a, a color primary on here so you know we can dis distinguish between the two okay so let's go ahead and see what this looks like right so on here let's just input something pick next so there it is on the difficulty uh, that looks a little bit messed up difficulties we grab the difficulty and we didn't grab the name 
So that should be it. Hopefully we'll change it here. Right. And then prerequisites. So we didn't select any. Let's go ahead, come back here. Let's pick some. Uh, so we edited, came back here and they show up, right? And then we can go ahead and create it. And this trick should end up in our moderation. Uh, we got a 500. Let's check quickly what it is. Uh, again, this uh, user lambda closure, so we're not getting a user. Let's just confirm that because now we're getting the, the user from the moderation item. What we want to do is in our tricks controller, just double check when we create this on the moderation item, we don't set the user ID, right? So it could probably better off with to only allow to create this moderation item through a constructor, maybe some kind of that thing. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't know. We'll leave it as is. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do something along the lines of uh, adding validation on the server side, right? So in our forms here, where we have the trick form, let's go ahead and split this up, right? Because we have a form for updating and a form for creating and um, yeah, just split this up. So this will be update trick form and this original one will be create trick form, right? So just update all of those, remove the ID from here and the reason from here, inherit this from create trick form, and then just remove all the duplicates. Now, with Fluent Validation, uh, you get an abstract validator where you can put the rules for what fields you wanna validate, right? So the things that we've just written on the Viewify side, let's go ahead and put them in here. So public class uh, create trick form, um validation uh it will be abstract validator create trick form and in here all we want to do is create a constructor and then we can use the rule for select the property that we want to validate and then we'll just say not empty so our, our validation is actually pretty simple and not empty works on strings and collections alike right so it's just going to validate this whole thing for the update trick form, we can go ahead and uh, copy this. Unfortunately, I, I didn't uh, find a way to reuse this nicely, so we will just have to roll with this, right? Just up, make sure you update the constructor as well. Uh, spawn two new of these, and we just want to make sure that we validate that the ID is not equal zero. So if the ID is not present, it's going to be zero. And the reason is not empty as well, right? So let's just get the reason in there. Uh, one error in the tricks controller because it's using the create trick form. So we want to update trick form here. And then in the forms, all of these things, just go ahead and uh, uh, let's just uh, move these in a file. Yeah, right. So all of these classes, just move them out and that's going to be fine, right? So how do we add uh, fluent validation? If we go into our controller and we take a look at where we add controllers, Let's just go ahead and add fluent validation. And here, what we want to do is we want to register from assembly and we can supply type of startup and dot assembly, right? Now let's just drop this down to a new line and there we go, right? So when we register our fluent validation, we basically say, go ahead and scan the startup assembly for validators. So it's going to find all of these things. And it's just going to load them into memory. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, it pretty much works from there. So how can we do a quick test of this? Uh, I like to use the writer's HTTP client thing. I don't know how to call it. So you look for HTTP, make an HTTP request. Uh, let's just call it test. This is going to end up somewhere here. Uh, we can delete it later, but just go ahead, press a request. Uh, text body application JSON, right? So this is what we're going to post somewhere. We can go ahead and post this to HTTPS 5001 tricks. So this is somewhere that we're going to create this stuff. We're going to pass an empty form. And one thing that we're going to be missing from here is a cookie. So let's go into the application here. We're going to grab the name of the cookie. We can go into add a cookie header, put the name here equals and then grab the value and put the value after it, right? So what we will do now is just run the validation. And here you will see the 
validator working automatically. So we get an error and uh, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much it. If we want to, we will need to supply these things for it to work. But other than that, um, this is how I do a quick little test. All right, so let's delete that HTTP request thing. And let's go ahead and move over to the submission steps. Uh, we will have to do just a little bit of work there. Uh, let's just move this down and um, come back here, right? Uh, let me just give it a little bit of a reset. All uh, right, so here, let's go to the submission steps where we submit our files and stuff like that. So a couple of things that I wanted to do here. First of all, I wanted to consolidate the submission and the select trick. So let's go ahead and remove this step here. So we're going to remove one step extra. We're going to take uh, this input field and we're going to put it below here. Okay, uh, let's remove this step here. And we're just going to put step three here for the review step. Again, we're going to do the same thing we're gonna, where we're going to add this sort of... Um, you know, just a summary of what you're doing. But other than that, uh, this one, first of all, just put it to autocomplete. Same thing here. V form, uh, ref, oh, ref form, V model, and validation, valid. And again, this is something that we're just going to go ahead and add to the data. So validation, valid and start with false and what kind of things do we want to validate we want to validate the description we want to validate that we have selected a trick and we want to well video validation i mean that we're we're kind of gonna have that so a bit through the upload so we're not going to use beautify to validate that um, we are going to use it on the back end rather um again same thing what do we want to validate trick id put the rules in here value and we'll say or a uh, trick is required. Let's copy this, rename this to description. And we're just gonna say description is required. All right, uh, let's put, go ahead and put these validators on here. So oh, uh, one thing I missed out on here is review is step three now rather. And yep, yeah, so that's it. Uh, on the V file input, we will need to do a couple of things there, but let's just do the validation on here first. So let's move the V form. Uh, let's actually keep that there and uh, let's bind the rules validation trick ID could probably just call that trick, uh, but let's go ahead and put the validation for the description here. And same thing as before on the click. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into refs, form, validate, is it true? Otherwise return zero and disable this if not valid. Uh, validation, valid, and not, and again, I'm just going to, uh, should I, does this need to, a little, no, okay, no, right. L let's actually go ahead and see what this looks like. So create submission, uh, let's submit something, right? And then you see the next is not seen there. Yep. So we can select one and can we type something in? We can, All right? So follow up next and there we go, right? So let's put a summary. Uh, let's give a chance to go back and edit the information or give a chance to go ahead and reset all together, right? So. Uh, let's go ahead and do the um, summary first. So let's just go into the trick steps. We are going to copy one of these lines here. Let's go ahead and say the trick. We will do file name just in case. Uh, let's put a little space here and we'll do description, right? So oh, jumped all the way to the end. So back here. So trick ID. Uh, again, this is something that's going to have to come from the dictionary. Let's go ahead, grab the dictionary. In the dictionary, we're going to have tricks. Let's go ahead and grab the trick ID. And we're going to grab the name. I had an error when testing this, so I'm just going to put, say, the if uh, form dot uh, trick ID, right? So if we have this thing, actually display it. 
for the form name, what we're going to do, or sorry, for the file name right here. Let's actually just quickly put the description here. So for the file name, what I want, what what I what we'll need to do is we'll need to do something along the lines of a vmodel file. So we will need to model the file onto our Vue.js state. And let's go ahead and add this to the data here. So we'll just say file, no. All right, and this is gonna be the same kind of file as here, uh, although we'll still grab uh, the, the one from the event here, so we're not gonna be utilizing it that much. Uh, what we will do is we will need to expand our map state here. And what I will do is I'll just create a computer property uh, file name. Let's go ahead and return uh, this file, check if it's there, this file name, otherwise empty string, and then we can use the file name here. Okay. And there we go. And then just let, let's just add a couple of buttons, justify center, let's uh, remove that. Couple of buttons, v spacer, We'll give this an edit where the step is just going to go um, backwards and we're, we can, we'll end up on this form again and we can edit it or we will have a restart, right? So add a little bit of margin on the top, add a little bit of margin on this button here. Uh, so two, save and again, just the colors. Let's add a primary color here. And uh, for the save, I guess we are completing this rather or upload complete complete oh yeah just complete there so restart let's add this function here so uh, uh, so restart okay so a couple of things that will need to happen here when we do restart uh, the way you you have to understand that the a file upload can be in progress. We want to reset the up, any uploading file promises. We want to reset the file in the input form. So and we want to reset the form uh, as well. So let's just go ahead and do this sort of one by one. We'll start here and we'll just say init form and we'll give this a lambda, which really you know should be this lambda here, and we're gonna pass it here. And we didn't. We don't need to call it. So when we reset this form equals init form, and we call it right. So this way we go ahead and we just reset the state here. Uh, we will need to clear this file as it's not part of the form that we are submitting. So let's go ahead and say this file equals null. Uh, another thing that we will need to reset are the steps, right? So the steps are not part of the form that we are submitting either. So, and I don't want to like close the thing and reopen it. I just want to pop back to the beginning. So, and this step equals one, right? So we go, we go back to the start and the state here is reset. Now on the video upload bit, this is where we will need to cancel an upload and we will need to reset the state. So a couple of things, if the active is ever going to go uh, false, the original container for holding the, th uh, the form is going to close, right? And the component is going to be cleared as well. So these are the two things that we want to sort of tweak, right? So let's go ahead and say active and we'll provide the default values. No, and then we'll, we're going to bind it, right? So at the moment, if we call this function, it's like as if nothing has changed, right? So th the thing that we want to do is when we reset, we want to say, is it a hard reset? So if hard reset, let's just do the thing that we've been doing before. Otherwise, let's just do a, you know, active will still be true. And component, we can just grab the same component because the component, we're going to reset it in the component itself, right? Now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and locate all the usages. So for me, the key bind is Alt-L-U. Uh, I think you can locate use usages, maybe locate, select, um, yeah, I can't see it here. Maybe if you control shift G here on this function, nope. Or find usages, right? So right click, find usages, and you should get this menu as well. Otherwise, 
just try to remember where I'm gonna point to. So primarily we're using the reset function in the video upload on two places. So this is the part where we want to supply the hard or uh, what's it called or soft submission essentially, right? So on the cancel upload, this is actually where we want to trigger it. So this is where we want to basically override it because sometimes we just want to close it and it's a hard reset and sometimes we want to basically just invoke it just to reset it softly but we still want to cancel the upload okay so on the create submission this is the other bit where it's getting used uh, we want to just full-on hard reset it all the time right so hard true and on here hard and we will pass hard from here right so next thing again uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe we can hide this on the cancel upload we can again locate the usages we can see where it's being used and this close is the only bit where it's being used right so right here and function it the function itself so where we are invoking it uh, let's just return it because it's a promise as well the thing that we want to pass to it here is it a hard reset or not uh, let's go ahead and just say hard on here by default we will say false so we're always going to or actually let's say true yeah because we, we, we always want to go into this state here by default and let's just say hard okay and now it's sort of it, it, I mean it should propagate there so the only place where we're really going to this uh, close and maybe do we ever need do we even need it to do it for the close there uh, let's just say hard true here on the close and this cancel upload uh, where we will say we'll call it from here we'll say hard false okay so we'll cancel upload it's going to be soft it's just going to help us reset the state right and this is going to be the restart so it's going to keep the component open and most of the stuff is still going to rename remain the same okay uh, let's go ahead and give it a try make sure i haven't forgotten anything uh let's uh, yep create submission so select a file yep we'll do um, oh this trick doesn't exist obviously backwards roll some kind of thing next so there it is so we can either restart or edit if we edit we pop back here we can edit it come back here if we restart it we pop back to the beginning and then we can select something else right and uh, probably could also and let's see can we complete it okay so that looks like it's worked i can't remember exactly what i've uploaded for though so uh maybe i'm, I'm thinking it's just worth to reset the validation so it looks pretty right so validation valid false false uh although i'm not sure it was false before it's going to be false then yeah i mean i mean uh, that's not going to do anything and uh, now let's go ahead and do the same thing that we've done before for the validation here so uh, let's just go here we're gonna go public class uh, submission form validation abstract validator submission form uh, let's go ahead get a constructor in here rule four let's select the things track id if we want to really go super deep we can implement cu custom validators that will check if this id is actually in the database or not uh, i'm i'm not gonna go that far let's just say not empty all right for the description not empty and for the video not empty as well right so as long as these things are not empty i'm fine with that let's go ahead move this out into its own file and there we go uh, now we want to do essentially the same thing for the categories and difficulties let's go ahead and log out so we can actually get to the button uh, let's roll in as a moderator with a password and um, god damn it all uh, right so difficulty again i mean uh, same sort of spiel you should be able you should be comfortable at this point because uh, the other two were essentially the hard ones okay so where are we looking for we're looking at the difficulty form uh where we have uh, the v card v tail v okay so this bit here v form 
And what the hell is this thing? I keep seeing it. I'm not sure what it is. Right, V form, as always, ref form, V model, validation, valid. Get the validation in here in the data. Validation, valid, false, um, name, rules. And then don't forget the comments. Description rules. And again, same thing where we have the value. Just make sure we'll say name is required. Actually, keep, copy that line there. Description. Subscription is required. Review. Uh, do we really need... Uh, actually, no. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's put a color on here. Primary. Not save will indicate that we're creating a record. On here, we will say rules, validation, name. Copy this. Description. Let's drop some of these to new line. Can make this. I mean, yeah, I mean, that doesn't really matter right there. Uh, on the action i mean we don't really validation valid yeah we don't need it to be part of form it's fine that it's there um do we want the save here i think it should be just disabled by default uh, or is it not uh let's see if we need to do this validation uh oh, oh. form Validate, and otherwise no. Nope. Okay, uh, valid, uh, disabled, not valid. Okay, and now it should be disabled. Okay, so test, some kind of description, category, and created, what happened? Nothing happened? Do we do anything? Probably want to call it as a function here. All right, and create, okay. So now if we create a trick, uh, let's see, create a trick. Got not name of undefined, what was going on? Uh, create trick. Okay, so I guess something is actually messed up when we were creating the this form. So let's just quickly check the state. I was a little, uh, that, was, that did not prepare me there. Um, Categories, not in here, list, categories, where, oh, difficulty, okay, okay, so we were in difficulty, test, that looks fine, where is it, erroring, name of undefined, um, I just come back here, refresh, moderation, nope, not on the moderation, on the submission, nope, on the difficulty, nope, on the trick, yep, so trick steps, what is it saying here? Um, let's read the error again. Cannot read property name of undefined. Uh, let's open up the trick steps where we get the name. And we are probably in the same ballpark with this thing here. So let's just say uh, v if form difficulty, right? So if we have this thing, okay, uh, let's just check that create trick okay and that's fine all right uh, i'm happy with that the difficulty is created still so if we scroll down that test difficulty should be there so that's fine uh, so that takes care of the difficulty pretty much the same thing for the category bit uh, let's go ahead and do that so difficulty form we can keep it open if we want to reference it uh, category form uh, i mean uh, my, my, might be able to just do this here and the button again same thing uh, the the these two forms are really like exactly the same almost i'll just copy the validation here as well put this here and let's check it so category uh why is it throwing there uh render valid of undefined okay yeah, yeah so that's fine let's create some kind of category Create, cool. Um, oh, <laughs> let's just quickly come back here and category. 
refresh so there's our new category with no tricks right and if we create a trick we should be able to select these two categories and difficulties right so uh same kind of thing with the validation for the um, uh, for these forms do we did we ever create any forms for these so let's category controller where we okay so we don't so let's right so create a class category form uh, what kind of things do we submit in here name and description I think that's the only thing that we'll need in here All right we can go ahead and just uh, we'll, we'll do that later public class um, category form validation abstract validator category form right constructor rule four for it's a name not empty right copy it description and there it is so this data right here just go ahead and remove it we can copy this whole thing i think maybe if we do something like this difficulty select a much and replace all nope that was a mistake and maybe there is a select uh in selection and then replace all right difficulty form a uh, difficulty form so that's fine so here, i mean here are the things uh let's go ahead and uh, one usage where am i using okay, okay yeah that's fine. i'm using it there okay so move these out uh should have probably done the move out in file right here so it moves everything out so everything is in the form with the validators we can create a different uh, directory for validation. Grab our, all of our validations and stick it in there. And then just fix the namespaces. Uh, should have probably done something like in project. Okay, so all of our validations are in separate form folder, separated, all good. Let's go ahead and change this, right? So category form. We will then need to do a new category. I don't think there is any point in uh, I action result returning the category itself as well. Let's just press OK here. Um, get this imported. Uh, the ID. Let's go ahead and do the thing here. Uh, remove the semicolon name uh let's rename this to form form name and then description form description uh user id uh, this is mutable um we will still think about if we want to take it through the moder moderation process and stuff like that for now let's just keep it like this okay uh, and then let's just do the same thing on the difficulty controller down here so i'll just do difficulty form uh let's just do form don't need to return this just say okay i action result uh, I, I action result um new difficulty all right put it here the id Pop it here, category on the form. And I'm not sure where that category came from, but uh, yeah, this uh, um, description equals form description. And that should take care of that. Not sure what that breakpoint is. Uh, let's just quickly give it a try. So we give it a refresh. We should really take care of this as well. Create a difficulty test, test, create. Okay, so if we go back here with a big refresh, okay, and there it is. Okay, so the forms uh, are working, you know, as expected. Uh, that wasn't too difficult. Let's go ahead and uh, do some validation for stuff like the moderation item review context where we have the review form, right? So uh, let's create a new class uh, review form validation right implement abstract validation validator 
uh, review form. There it is. Constructor again a rule form. What do we got? Comment. Uh, not empty. Should really be only when uh, the status is appropriate. So on the comment here, let's just say when, and we'll say comment status or doesn't equal uh, approved, right? So when it doesn't equal approved, we will require a comment. So I think we can actually test that real quick right now. So if we, did we approve this? Uh, okay, so that was reloading. Okay, so that's fine. So let's just go ahead, reject. Uh, I mean, th that is going to be a little bit hard. Uh, let's do this. We'll reject. Hopefully that's in the network. No, it's not. Uh, let's reject again, right? And where we have the request here, which one is it? I think it's this one. Can we replay on or edited? Um, no, it's, it won't let us edit it, will it? Uh, let's quickly remove the validation on there. So if we go to underscore mod ID and we will say, uh, where is our review form here? Uh, review text, uh, the dialogue, 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 dialogue. You know, the problem with having too much HTML. Uh, dialogue, there it is, uh, cancel. Otherwise, okay, so this is the button disabled. Let's just comment this out. And let's reject here. Okay, that doesn't look good at all. Let's just control X this. Okay. And again, reject. And this should probably cause an error on the back end. Pending. And let's take a look at this. Nope. Should have triggered it. Uh, let's try again. Reject. This hangs there. I'm hoping it's not the fact that it's a nested class. What is going on here? Uh, let's quickly pop this back here unless something's been broken horrifically. So reject. Reject. And something spending right let's just restart the server there I'm not sure what's going on okay so this is after restarting the server again we're just gonna pop a reject in here so there it is we're gonna try to edit the reject so that's fine unless I have okay uh, I realized that with the app settings we still have this on too so let's edit that uh, let's give this I don't know remove a namespace that's not used to reset the state uh, and let's just cut this bit here again. Again on the moderation. Let's go in here and again, I'll have to log in. Mod password. Okay. Say reject. Reject with no comment. And there we go, right? So the preview with the validation, we can, uh, you know, handle the, these uh, validation uh, what's it called uh, constraints although i don't think it's that important as long as we have the correct validation in place and uh, status must not be empty it definitely shouldn't be empty uh, although uh, i just think it shouldn't be a specific value which i don't think it can be if it's an enum um yeah, let's just remove that bit and just uh, check uh, the comment validation on this one, okay? So uh, with that said, let's just pop the constraint back on here. The validation is working as expected. Uh, let's just double check that, uh, what's it called? That the approve without the comment works, right? Okay, so uh, that does. Now, uh, the last thing that I wanted to take care of is the comment form. So let's go to the comment creation context and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the comment form class and we're actually gonna put it in here, right? So class in here, right? I think just one place where it will need to be fixed. Okay, since we're, I'm trying to follow a specific pattern. So if we put the 
form that we're using for the context inside the context. Let's just do the same with the comment creation bit as well. Okay, uh, let's just remove this here. And again, the same thing. Uh, just let's just add a form validation uh, form validator for this. So class comment uh, form validation. Uh, yep. Abstract validator. Uh, comment form constructor rule four and let's just say content not empty okay uh, for now that will do with the content form parent id um i think that will always actually always will be required as well because the parent id is either the moderation item and or the submission or whatnot right so that should still be there uh, i'm not going to test this one i'm confident it works uh i don't think i've forgotten anything this application is getting quite big so for now in terms of validation this will be it thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it leave a like subscribe if you have any questions make sure to leave them in the comment section or come ask me on my discord server as always i stream on wednesdays and sundays tell you this every time i'm joined man and as always i also always say this i gotta say always see you in the next episode